Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, thank you so much for joining me. On my channel, I share all the random things that I make in paper crafts, sometimes even in the backyard. One of the things that I work on is I make a scrapbook page, an eight by eight scrapbook page for every quilt that my mom makes. She wants to make a hundred quilts in her lifetime and she is on, I have a page for number 75. So I think she's doing pretty well. This week I made five scrapbook pages. I'll share a couple with you. If it's not too long, we'll do them all in one video or I'll have multiple videos. I will link to the other videos on my channel about this. This might be an idea you want to do for a quilter in your life, maybe for a seamstress, maybe somebody in your life makes amazing wedding gowns. I don't know. It's pretty fun and for us it has, these aren't customers, they're all family and friends so it really tells the story of our life and then you pick up photographs of people's houses and all kinds of stuff. This is a very strange page I just realized because I don't know who number 68 was for. My mom didn't say in the write-up. And she usually gives me a business size envelope with fabric scraps and all sorts of things. For 68, we seem to have lost it. She thought I had it. I thought she had it. I had these scraps from other quilts and used them on the page. So this is number 68. It's a pinwheel. She writes about some of the products she used when she finished it and the size. And you can see that she does embroidery on every one of her quilts with her initials and the number. One time in a huge hurry, I think it was actually 67, she almost skipped that step, but I stopped her and didn't let it out the door. So I believe they're all marked. And she likes to make baby quilts, of course, because that helps her numbers. <laughs> She hand quilts absolutely everything. And I think this page is pretty cool because it shows some of that. So the pages have typically maybe a bit of fabric, a piece uh, or a photo of the quilt. They might have a thank you note. Here I fussy cut a butterfly, not very well, just pretty quick and lazy, out of this fabric so you could see it. Sometimes the photos don't do the fabrics justice because of colors. Interestingly, these blues picked up okay, so it shows nicely. Every once in a while, the fabric scraps actually clash with the photo, so then I have problems. And she does a write-up for every single quilt, and she keeps it in a Word document, and we share it online or email it back and forth. And then this is for her embroidery, where she dated it, put her initials, and the number. This was 69. And this was for my cousin's second baby. My mom always puts the names and birth dates of the babies. I don't like to share that because there are lunatics out there. So I just leave that off. This was an interesting page because I used to build my page on the paper that she gave me about this. It was a whole cloth quilt top and it's pre-printed and you just quilt the pattern on it. You don't have to draw on your pattern. So I got a bit of that concept, a photo of the finished quilt, and kept the backing. Kind of fun. That I think that's pretty different for her, that it's a whole cloth. And also pre-printed. Then this one and this one went together. I took my cousin out of the picture because sending your aunt a photo and having your crazy cousin put it on the internet is different, right? <laughs> so this, my mom realized she wasn't going to send a baby quilt to the new baby without another quilt for the first baby. Which I don't know if she kept that up because my cousin has another baby. This page, I have her favorite thread. She keeps these bits. So she sent me the end of her thread, which I have a couple of different ones of those. This was the package for her needles and I kept the price tag off the back with her favorite shop in town on it, fabric scraps. In this, you'll have photos of my cousin's house and also her oldest son. And he's unboxing it and celebrating while his mom holds it up. How cute is that? So over time, it's not just pictures of quilts. My mom takes a picture almost every single time. Sometimes she messes up, but she takes a picture in her house. But then she requests a photo from the recipient. So we have lots of quilt pictures with babies and that kind of thing. So that's just super fun. And how cute is Johnny? Oh my gosh. 
Okay, we're still doing good for time, so let's keep going. We'll just do all five at once. This one was for my sister. And again, this is a different kind of thing. It's a big panel. And so it came this way. This is a big dahlia. There's also a blue one for me. Now, it has not been finished and made its way to my house. I should be filing a complaint soon. This is my mom's quilting on it. So an up-close photo of the quilting and some fabric samples. And here she had some stitching. Like this was one of her reject pieces that she had used, so I kept that. And then I kept one of the branding strips off the bottom. I don't know that I've used those before, but I thought it'd be fun. In the book, you're going to also see how my scrapbooking changed over decades. This page is a little more, I don't know, messy. Then I have another page end off of one of her thread spools that she used and just a dab of fabric there and then she wrote about it so i think that is super super cool it's also fun to see what my mom tries for quilts over the years and again you can see she's got it on her frame and the whole entire thing will be hand quilted how crazy is that it's awesome though so that was 72. The numbers aren't necessarily sequential because if it was a baby quilt in the middle, it might have been done and I may have already done the page. Then this one is 75. And this black piece right here is out of her needle package. It was the rippled thing that the needles poke through. So I smashed it flat and I used her embroidery pattern and you can see it right there on the corner of the quilt. And she had to piece the binding, so you can see that. I've got a nice picture of the quilting on there. And I know the camera doesn't always focus, but you just trust me, her quilting's amazing. And then the fabric scraps up there in the corner. So really, really tells a story. And like this lady, my mom has been friends with her for probably at least 30 years. So you keep people in your book because you kept them in your family and friends circle. It's it's a really neat idea. So if you have something where maybe a family member makes a super cool Christmas ornament every year and they give it to someone in your family, I don't know, but it's been really interesting to see how it turned out to be a book about our lives, not just about the quilts. You might have heard me say before, she chose 8x8 eight eight because she figured 12x12 12 12 would be too heavy when she's elderly and she wants to look at the books. I think that was a really good decision. It's actually turned out pretty well. At first, I struggled because 8x8 eight eight to tell the story of a quilt and include the people is hard, but I think it's a good challenge too. So it's single page, eight by eight, and she has about three books now, I think. I lose track. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that when I give her these, she doesn't say, great, now you're behind by 10 more. We'll see. <laughs> I hope you're taking time for crafting and relaxing. Bye-bye.